guys, today we are going to be working on adding in our um, pen techniques to our scroll that we've drawn out. Okay, so we sketched this out in our last video, and now you're going to choose which of the four techniques that you would like to use. Okay, so if you are going to be using stippling, which is done with the dots, I would recommend using the regular marker here, just like this. It's the, the one that has the wider point on it for the stippling. Um, if you do it with just the dots, it will take, with, sorry, with the smaller one, it will take so, 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 so long. Okay, so this one is a good size to use for stippling. If you are doing any of the other ones, so like the scumbling, the hatching, or the cross hatching, I would recommend using this ultra fine point sharpie, which looks like this right here, the pen tip like this. Okay, now this is a lot better because you can get detailed a little bit more than you can with this thicker one here. Okay, this one covers a little bit too much area um, for those techniques. So use this one for stippling only, and this one you can use for hatching, cross hatching, or scumbling. Okay, it's your choice what technique you choose to use, but please only use one technique for your paper. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with stippling. And so I'm going to take my Sharpie marker here. Okay, I'm going to look at my picture, um, my reference picture to see what is lighter and darker in those areas. Okay, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to kind of start with, I think I'm going to look at the darker areas first um, and kind of build from there. So what I would do is I would look at like the, for me, it's the horns and then like this little section here. And then this side is a little bit darker and I have these lines here as well. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is I might start looking at kind of like, we'll start with this point right up here. Okay. So if I'm looking at this point here, I would just kind of dot along this, All right? So I'm creating a dotted line here. Okay, and this area is really, really dark, so I can make it kind of a dense dotted line, right? So whenever I say dense, I mean that it's like really close together. Okay, so I'm kind of just pulling this through here like this, right? And so I'm kind of outlining, but using dots because I can only use dots if I've chosen stippling. Okay, so I'm gonna go through, it's becoming a little bit more apparent. Where that's at like that. Okay, and then I have this highlight up here that I sketched in earlier so that I would remember, hey, you have a highlight here, be careful. Okay, and so I'm going to just kind of work my way in here, but I'm going to keep it a little bit on the looser side. Um, so I'm going to keep it kind of spaced out for now because I can always add more dots. I can't really subtract any dots. Okay, so I have this here. Um, and then I'm going to start kind of adding in a few dots around where my highlight is on this horn over here. Okay, now with this horn, if you're looking at the highlight on the computer, um, it kind of looks more of a white over here, and then this area is kind of gray. Okay, so I'm going to show that as well. So I'm going to darken this up here a little bit. And remember, we want nice, smooth transitions because that's how lighting works in general in real life to make it look a little bit more realistic or believable. Okay, and so I'm adding these dots in here along this area because it is very, very dark. Okay, so I'm just going like this. Okay, and then I'm going to kind of start bringing in this area here. So right now there's kind of an abrupt stop, which doesn't really jive with how my, how the picture actually is. Okay, so I'm going to kind of bring this in a couple dots in here. A little bit more so like this. Okay, so it's a little bit more of a subtle change between those values. Okay, just like this. And I might have a couple spaces in here, okay? Because it's not super, super bright white in my picture. So I can have 
some dots in here. Okay, and then down here, I will continue those darker areas because this section right here on my on the horn is very dark. Okay, so I'm just going in through here nicely. Remember, you don't want to hammer away at your Sharpie. That's a really good way to ruin your Sharpie and have to go get a new one. The other thing you want to keep in mind too is while you're working on this, if you take a break at any point in time, you want to make sure that you put your lid back on your Sharpie because Sharpies love to dry out. I'm sure they love their jobs as like, you know, markers and stuff, but you know what their favorite thing is? Drying out. They love it. It's like their favorite pastime. They're like addicted to it. And so they, I mean, like literally, you can let them sit out for like 30 seconds or a minute. And they're like, you know, you know, I'm, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to dry out. And then you, you know, if that's your only Sharpie, you're like, oof, bad luck for you. It's hard to get it started again. It might not dry all the way out, but it dries out enough that it becomes really annoying to use. And that's kind of the worst. All right, so you'll continue going through here. You'll continue dotting, right? You want to make sure that you're keeping up with, there we go. You want to make sure that you are keeping up with just dotting, not coloring in, not dashes, okay? So I'm being very specific when I work on this. I'm just kind of going through here. And it's good to work sometimes a little bit slower than it is faster, because sometimes if you go really fast and you kind of get into like a pattern, you end up dotting the same place over and over again, right? So it's good to kind of change your hand position it's good to slow down and look, okay, I need to really dot this spot right here. And I really need to dot this spot. And I really need to dot this, okay? So you need to kind of work through it like that, okay? And I would just continue this going down here like this, okay? So I'm gonna continue this here. And then remember I have this highlight on this side that I'm gonna slow down for uh, just a little bit whenever I get there so I can do a nice fade the way that I have up here, okay? Now, once I get down to my highlight area here, I of course want to make sure this is all nice and dark by comparison. Okay, especially if you're using your crop patch and you want to have lots of lines going through here. Just like that. Okay, and what I want to do is I want to kind of keep this area spaced out a little bit. And remember, you can always go back and add a little bit more if you need to, right? It's always better to do less at first and then come back and fix it if necessary. Now, with your hatching, of course, hatching is just one direction. You don't ever want to have the crossed part because then that becomes cross hatching, right? We're just trying to stick to one uh, style here. But the thing about hatching is that you can switch directions for different parts. So for me, um, on this part right here, I kind of feel like it makes more sense um, on this area right here to have it kind of going sideways than it does to go um, the direction that I have been going. Okay, so I'm going to look at my reference picture and I'm going to have some lines that kind of come along here like this. And I have kind of this line here, right? And again, so for me, I'm doing contour hatching on this. I'm kind of following the basic shape that I have. So this one you can kind of see I'm following the roundness here. I have a little bit of a C shape. This one I'm gonna do the same thing. So these are still going to be kind of rounded instead of being straight, okay? And that's going to help emphasize the roundness of this horn here. Okay, so I'm going to have some lines kind of coming along here like this. Okay, because it's darker on the edges and then it's a little lighter towards the middle. So I'm going to add a little bit more this way, kind of like this. Okay, and then this area right here is a little bit darker. I'm going to kind of continue this, these lines here. All right, and I'm going to bring this a little bit closer because it kind of looks like it Fouls out here just a little bit. And then this side is darker down here. Because of the shadows. So I'm adding those in to make them denser. Just like so. Okay, and then I'm gonna add in, because this area isn't super, super bright, right? I'm gonna add in a few more lines to kind of help blend it together. All right, so I'm kind of making them slightly rounded. Just like that. Okay, and I feel like I have this weird space right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a few more lines in here to kind of make it closer to what I think is the best. And 
correct. All right, I'm feeling a lot better about that. I'm going to add a little bit more right here. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. All right, um, and then I'm going to add a, just a tiny bit more over here. I have kind of like a darker area on this part of the horn. Okay, so that's how I would do this with my hatching. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move on to this other horn right over here. So for this side of the horn, I'm keeping it kind of loosey-goosey with my cross hatching because I know that when I go the opposite direction, it'll get a little bit darker. Okay, so I'm kind of putting in my, essentially my base layer, if you would, of lines here. Okay, and then this one, I have a kind of a, uh, a highlight right here. So I'm kind of being careful about that. But I'm going to go ahead and start working in the opposite direction. And I think I'm going to go with kind of cross or contour cross hatching for this as well. Okay, so that means that maybe I'm going to have kind of a C shape as I go here. And I'm going to kind of bounce this this other way like this. Kind of go in the opposite direction, just like that. Okay, and I don't want to end up, you see how this weird kind of white space here? I want to make sure that that's not happening. I don't want to go over my outer line, obviously, but sometimes if you start there and then kind of work towards the middle, it makes it a little bit easier. All right, and this side might kind of go the opposite direction. All right, and then up here, I'm going to have some kind of lines going through like this. Um, and this one is a little bit thinner and not quite as bright. Okay, I'm going to bring a couple lines down here like this. Okay, and this is maybe a little bit darker than what it needs to be, but I can I can um, make it still look correct by darkening up the rest of this here. Okay, so I'm still looking at my picture the whole time that I'm working on this and adding some more lines going this direction. It's going to help darken this up here. Right, and I'm really like looking at the spots like, okay, what area is way too light to be right? Right, and I'm specifically drawing my pin marks in that area. Right, and again, this is a highlight here, so I'm kind of preserving this area and I'm just overlapping a little bit because we want to have those nice smooth transitions. All right, so I have these here, kind of angling back this way, like so. And then I'm going to go through the opposite direction, and I think I'm going to turn mine just to make it a little easier for myself. And I'm going to add my other lines going this direction. So I just have some nice cross hatching going on over here. And then, so the sides next to the highlight are kind of dark. I'm going to add some more lines here and some more on this side. Right, and I'm just going to keep adding those lines to kind of fill in the darkness there. Make it nice and dark. All right, so lots and lots of lines. And again, I do want some lines here. I'm going to add a little bit more this way. Because I don't want it to be super crazy bright, but I do want to show that there is that darker area there. Okay, so again, I'm not coloring it in. I'm just drawing lines over and over again. It's kind of a similar method. You're kind of, you're, when you're drawing lots of lines, you're not coloring back and forth. That's not one continuous line like a W might be. It's just like the letter L over and over again, right? So not connected, singular lines going in the direction that they're supposed to go in. Right, so then I can darken this up, up here because I need some more. On this side. Right here. And this one is super thin up here. So I'm going to kind of add some more darkness on the side because I think my highlight looks a little on the thicker side. Right. And then I have a couple spots where it's just a very like awkwardly random right section. So I'm kind of adding in lines more specifically now. Instead of just randomly kind of shading it in, I'm working on that. Okay, and then for this part down here where it connects to the skull, 
right here. So this kind of like weird section that looks brown in the picture. I'm going to do the same thing, but I want to make sure that it's lighter. But I do want to have a decent transition here. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to start this direction first, and I'm going to do my patching kind of like this first to start off with. Like that. So keep it nice and loose. And then I'm going to go in the opposite direction here to add a little bit more. And I don't want to get, it's a, lot, a little bit lighter here, so I'm going to add just maybe a couple more. And then that outside part, I'm going to darken up just a little bit to help show that. So I can kind of just work, keep working back and forth figure out what works out best, what it needs, right? And remember, you can always go back and add more lines, more dots, whatever it is that you're working with, if it's a little bit too light. And sometimes you you might make something, what, make something the correct value, and then something else is too dark, so you have to kind of darken something up, or you have to um, adjust based on that, okay? So I have this one done here. It's done in uh, cross hatching. So I'm going to move on to other parts of my skull. Actually, let's get a little bit of a replay on that stumbling style. Okay, so I have, I'm keeping it kind of loose, paying attention to where my highlights are at. Through here. And I'm kind of layering out where things need to go on my uh, palette pen right here on my skull, right? And then I want to, of course, make sure that I have, I'm having it as dark as it needs to be in the correct areas, okay? So remember we talked about it was pretty, the highlight up here was much thinner, so I'm going to kind of darken this area up by keeping my stumbling a little bit tighter and therefore more dense. And again, we don't want to just color, right? This is, we're still maintaining that correct. It's just layers of the right texture. All right, so I'm kind of bringing this down here. Now to soften this a little bit, right? I will add a little bit of, a couple of little dashes and stumbles here and there, okay? Um, so that it's still light. And then I feel like, again, I got it a little bit, maybe I needed, I added a, too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to darken the edges just to help further emphasize where that highlight is at. All right, I'm going to darken this down here because by comparison, it will make the highlight look a little bit brighter. Um, so it'll look closer to what I was aiming for anyway. Okay, so I'm kind of bringing this down here. This area is pretty consistent. So I'm just kind of adding in my, my stumbles, right? Remember, it's good to go in the different in a different direction if you're working with something that has lines to it as opposed to the stippling with the dots. Okay, so I can kind of just work through this way like this. And then I know the edges here are much darker and I have that highlight in the center, which I'll work on here in just a bit. And I'm kind of just working through this way. All right, just like that, okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and start adding in a little bit through here. Okay, I'm looking at um, this one, and it's a kind of a, a smaller highlight area, a little bit more faint. I'm going to bring this up here just a tiny bit. I'm looking at my pencil lines that I have underneath, which is really helpful. All right, and then I can kind of start um, transitioning between these two, right? So that means I'm going to make the edge is a little bit darker, so it's a smoother transition between the darker areas and the lighter areas. Okay, and then for this part over here, right, I know my edges are a little bit darker on this kind of like brown section of the skull, like this. Okay, and then I know that I kind of have these like spaces here. So I'm going to kind of keep it loosey-goosey just like this, right? Remember, it's kind of scribbly, right? And then um, I'm going to kind of add in some of my texture going through here like this. OK, 
okay? And then I can start adding in more transitions in a little bit of on the darker areas. So it's a little darker here. And I add in just a little bit. I don't want it to be too dark and I don't want it to be too light. All right, but of course I can always go back and adjust it by adding some more later. Okay, so I feel pretty good about that. Now I'm going to go ahead and look at um, kind of the outline part of this, right? So with my stumbling, I'm gonna just keep it loose the way that I had previously outlined part of this. So I'm going to kind of bring this through here and I'm just gonna kind of keep it a little bit loose. So that means that it's not totally uh, perfect or necessarily accurate. I might add in a couple of lines here, just a little bit to add some more. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing a little bit over here, just to kind of get the rest of my drawing started. Right, and then I'm noticing on the skull, I have a shadow right here in this little area. So I'm going to add a little bit of extra kind of stumbling here. Okay, and then I have a little bit of some kind of texture over here. So I'm going to add a couple of lines like this. Okay. And then I have some uh, kind of texture up here in this area, right? So I have a little bit, it kind of looks like I have a little bit of a line going down here. And I have kind of this line that goes this direction, sort of. And I have this area that's like slightly darker. So I'm going to add in a little bit of shadow there. Okay. And maybe just kind of come down here a little bit more. And I'm kind of keeping it loose as I go, okay? And then I have the lines on the face here. So what I'm going to do, again, I don't want to harshly outline. I do want to follow my guide that I have in the pencil, right? But I want to kind of keep it the, the same texture as the stumbling itself, right? So I'm not really, I'm pressing so lightly and keeping it so loosely with this. Just like this, okay? So I'm kind of going through here. Now in this, right, this line kind of comes down here, right? And so it kind of keeps the same texture so that it looks nice and consistent. It looks like it goes together, right? And I'm doing the same thing over here. I'm kind of bringing this down this way, right? And I'll finish this line over here. And I can start kind of looking at some of the darker areas on my skull, right? So for example, um, oh, I do want to go ahead and add in these little dotted areas. Right, so I kind of have this little spot. And I'm gonna, I am going to kind of dot these a little bit just because um, there's not really a good way to dot in stumbling. Right? And then I'm looking at some of the darker areas. So I know that the eye over here on the side is a little bit on the darker side. And it looks like it might be a little bit lighter down here, but I am going to go ahead and just kind of fill this in lightly first. And then I'll darken up the side over here so I can have that nice transition between the lighter and darker. Okay, so I'm gonna add that in there. Okay. Yeah, so then I'm gonna start adding in some of the shadows that I see over here on the face after I've finished my lines that I have kind of along these lines here. Just like this, right? And I have kind of this section down here. And then I have this line kind of along here. Okay, so then I would start adding in some shadows there. So again, with that cross hatching, I'm kind of going in through here, I'm adding a couple lines here and there um, to kind of show where everything is at. So I have this area here. It's going to kind of come up this way. Right, and I remember it, we don't want to get crazy dark here, but I'm just adding some of this uh, definition in here. So I'm kind of keeping it loose. Kind of like that. Okay. A little bit more there. Okay, and then I have this shadow that was kind of over here. So I'm going to add a little bit more of that texture in. Okay, and have this kind of area here. Right, and this I can kind of do with a little bit more of like a line approach. Okay. Right, 
And so I can add in some of these darker areas. So for example, I can look at um, this section down here, kind of where the, I guess the nose area is. And I can start kind of looking at the shapes that I see and how light or dark it might be. And so usually when I do cross hatching, I always go one direction first and then I kind of swap back the other direction. Like so. And then I change as needed, right? And then if I do the same thing around this side, I kind of go this direction right over here. And I'll go back this direction right this way. Just like so. Okay, and then this area here on my skull is darker and then it kind of fades into a lighter area, but this bottom section here is still darker than like this area up here. Okay, so I want to keep that in mind while I'm working on that. Okay, so I'm going to darken this area down here first. And again, I'm going to keep it kind of loose and light so I can darken, um, I can darken the areas that really need to be dark as, as I go. So I'm going to keep this and add a couple lines down here. Okay, and bring this down just a little bit. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit down here on this bottom section, right? So I'm going to kind of add one direction to start off with. Here, and then it kind of looks like it kind of comes up this way before it gets a little darker. Okay, and then this section, I'm gonna, wait a second, I'm gonna come up here and add in a couple more lines. This way and I'm going to go ahead and turn so I can start adding those cross hatches right to really help kind of help darken this area up because I know that it's much darker and then this section down here I kind of have some like shadowed areas so this section looks a little darker like this okay and then I have a couple I'm going to spread them out a little bit I'm going to have some lines going down here and then I'm going to go the opposite direction like this. Okay, so I'm kind of bringing this up here like that. Okay, and with cross hatching, you kind of want to keep things a little on the sketchy side, right? So now you can see the lighter area that I have um, compared to kind of this darker area. And then, of course, these little weird, I don't even know what it is, but um, this one is a little bit darker than this one is. So I'm going to kind of add in, a, I'm going to start a little bit loosely at first, like this. Okay, and then I'm going to add in, I know this side's a little darker, so I'm going to go a little bit closer on these lines here. And sometimes when you're using um, pen, if you kind of change the general direction that your pen is going, it'll help show those differences a little bit more. Okay, so I have that there. This side, I'm going to go a little lighter on that. I'm going to spread it out a little bit more, just like so. And this side, it looks like it's a little darker towards the top, so I'm going to add some of this in here, right, and so it kind of comes down like this, and this edge needs to be a little bit darker over here to help show that difference between those spaces, okay, which is fine because it looks like this side is a little bit darker in the picture anyway, okay, and so here is a little on the, this side is a little darker, this side's on the lighter side, so what I can do over here is I can kind of add in um, some of these lighter areas and I'm just keeping it nice and soft and kind of easy here, okay? Because this area kind of opens up to a lighter spot. I have a couple areas where there's some shadow in it, right? So for example, over here, I have some kind of shadows. I'm gonna add those in as I see fit, just like that, right? And kind of the same thing along the lines here. So I'm gonna add a little bit of on this side, okay? And then this side over here is just a little bit darker. Not crazy dark, but just a little bit darker. So um, I'm going to add in some more kind of soft lines like this, kind of keeping it open. And then I'm going to come back the opposite direction and add in some more of these lines here. Just like that. 
Okay, and I would continue doing that for the rest of this. So I still have like the eyes, I still have a couple spots in here where there are shadows. There's definitely like a nice shadow over here that I need to I should address. Right? Okay, and then um, so I'm going to go ahead and work on the rest of these shadows here that you see just those very slight changes in color and value on my skull. And with your hatching, you can also use longer and shorter um, lines with your regular hatching. So for example, on this side here, I have kind of these lines um, that go here to show some shading that kind of indicate that there. And I'm going to kind of bring it down along this edge here because this side here has just a little bit of a darker look to it, just kind of how the light's hitting it. So I'm going to use my pen to draw some really light lines here, just like that. Okay, and then along here, under the eye socket, this I have a couple of spots that are a little bit darker, kind of like that. And so I'll add in these kind of smaller pieces here, especially if it's a subtle shadow. So I'll use kind of some small lines. And honestly, whenever I use lines like this in my art, especially if I'm doing pen art, I always feel like I'm drawing a comic book. You remember like the, especially like the comics that come in the newspaper, they always have kind of shading like that, where it's just like a couple of lines to show the direction of light or the shadow or something like that. And so I always feel like I am working in a comic. And so I can add these here, right? This area here we know is a lot darker, of course. And so we can show that with our lines, you can choose if you want to keep your lines horizontal, if you want to keep them going up and down, it's up to you. Um, for this, I think I'm actually going to go horizontally. I'm going to bring this down here. Like this. And I'm putting them very close together because I know that this area is very, very dark. Okay, and so what I'm doing, I notice, I don't know if you noticed, but I kind of work from this side and then this side. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I can go along this line that I have here. Um, and then end in the middle, and then I can come over on this side. That way I don't end up with that weird like halo with that, and I don't really go over my lines too much. Okay, so this area is nice and dark here. Um, and then it kind of fades out so I can have some of these like lighter areas down here. Right, and then there's a little bit of shadow over on this side. Here, just like that. Okay, and then this side over here is a, a little bit darker, so I can add a few more lines like that. And then this middle section we know has some shadow on it compared to the rest of the skull. And so I would just keep working it through like that, okay? Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and add on and finish the rest of these shadows here. To work on my stippling, I want to make sure that I am, when, if I work on the outline itself, I want to kind of space them out, especially on the lighter areas, because I can always go back and add in a few more dots if necessary. Okay, so I'm looking here, I've got this, and I'm going to look at where the shadows are at, and I'm going to lightly dot those in. So I have a shadow that's kind of down here that we've established, right? So I have a bit of a shadow here. And it kind of comes down here. And so the nice thing about working with stippling and doing these dots here is that you can add in things a little bit more subtly if that's your style, right? So there's a bit of a shadow here. Okay. And then, um, and then, like I said, I have this kind of shadow that comes down this way here, a little bit like this. Okay. And then I have this shadow that kind of comes up here on this side. And so I'll have these dots here that show that, right? And this section over here is a tiny bit darker. I'm going to show those with closer dots. And then I'm going to kind of space it out just a little bit. This one right here is a little bit more dense. Like that. Okay. And then I can make sure that I am fading out accordingly. Okay. Now, for the other sections, so like this area right here, it kind of looks like a line, but I'm just going to create a bunch of dots that are close together to show the texture that's there like that. OK, 
okay? Um, and then for like this bigger section of the skull, um, I'll have the shadow areas. Like for example, um, I do have an area down here that's kind of shadowed. So I'd have my line showing here. And then I would add in a few dots like this to kind of show that shadow, shadowy area, like so. Okay. Um, just like that. And then I have kind of a shadowy area that comes down this way too. And this shadow looks a little bit darker. And so in order to show the difference, I would make sure that these, these dots are a little bit closer down here so you can kind of see the difference. Okay, this area is darker, this area is lighter. Okay, and I'm gonna extend this to kind of thin out up here a little bit. And then of course this eye socket area is gonna be a little bit darker. So I might have some dots that kind of come more down like this here. And it looks like it gets dark to about here. And then it starts lightening up, which is nice because this area right here is kind of darker on the bones. We have a nice transition between that. So I'll kind of lighten this up. Okay, and I'll add a few extra dots in this way, just like that. Okay, so you can start to see those parts there. Now for these bigger spaces, whenever you're working with stippling, you do want to add in a few dots just so it's not so plain. So you might have a couple of spaced out dots like this just to show um, that there is this is the lighter area, okay? Same thing with like this area here, you might have, um, I guess this is like the, the nose, like the bridge of the nose, right? And down here, it looks like there's a little bit more shadowing. So there might be a little bit of a darker area down here. Um, but then the rest of it is going to be a little bit more spaced out. Okay, and then of course, wherever those lines are at, so for me, I have those lines that kind of come through here. I can have, I can show it's more of a line just by dotting closer together. And if you're not sure how close to put your dots, you can always make them further apart first, like I did up here. And then you can add in a few more dots if necessary, right? So you might do something where it's kind of spaced out like this, right? And then you might go, okay, we need some more dots. So then you might kind of come through and add in a few more dots and see how you like that. And then if you, feel like there needs to be even more dots, you can go ahead and do that too. Okay, so it looks kind of like this, right? And I can kind of add in some of these. And to make the, the dots that are supposed to be there a little bit more obvious, I'm kind of actually doing two dots or like a little grouping of dots. So it's like, oh, it's like the boldened, emboldened dot. Okay, so I can still see those there, right? And then of course I wanna make sure I don't have any like weird spaces Right, and then for areas like this, you know, the super dark area here, like this, I would just dot very close together. And when I have a super dark area, a lot of times I like to just kind of focus on that spot and slowly work my way down instead of trying to rush over it multiple times. That's usually my approach. I think it goes a little bit better that way, just in my experience. Okay, so then I would dot it in like that, and then I would finish my drawing. Okay, so that is how we work through the multiple styles of our stumbling. Um, we talked about all four styles in this video using the same type of skull so you can see how it's applied. Okay, um, but remember, you're choosing just one style for your skull. I just wanted you to be able to kind of see all four styles in action. Um, so that you can choose the one that you like the best. Okay, good luck on this.